He has shown us everything that is poetic in Mexico, where Manuel Álvarez Bravo has stopped to photograph a light, a sign, a silence. It is not only where Mexico's heart beats, but also where the artist has been able to feel, with a unique vision, the totally objective value of his emotion. These were André Breton's words about Manuel Álvarez Bravo's photography. As the Mexican identity was being lost and deflected into a more international culture, Manuel Álvarez Bravo maintained the pure Mexican culture and image through photography. He was born in Mexico City the 4th of February of 1902 and died the 19th of October of 2002 also in Mexico City. At age of 12, his father died, so he dropped out of school and started working. For 16 years, he worked as an accountant in the civil service while the revolution was taking place. However, because his father and grandfather really enjoyed art, he kept doing art. He started off by going to evening classes in painting, literature, music, and later on extending it to pre-Columbian art and sculpture. His first influence in the world of photography was Hugo Breme, which incited him to buy his first camera. Hugo Breme was a German photographer that was also interested in Mexican culture. Bravo met Breme in Breme's photographic studio in Mexico. Bravo started to acquire photographic techniques since here. In 1926, he won his first prize in a local contest in Oaxaca called Feria Regional Ganadera de Oaxaca with his picture, Dos Novios en una Barca. In this contest, he started demonstrating his statements with the Mexican culture and it launched his professional career. That same year, he met Tina Modotti, an Italian photographer, and became really good friends. In 1930, Modotti was sent back to Italy because of her communist ideals, which were not acceptable in the post-revolutionary phase since the ideals at the time were more democratic and tried to leave behind the dictator ideals of Porfirio Diaz. Bravo held Modotti's position in the magazine Mexican Folkways when she left Mexico. Modotti influenced Bravo's decision to become a full-time professional photographer. His first exhibition was in New York in 1935, which exposed his side of Mexican lives, culture, and problems. This exhibition made his pictures gain more recognition. However, aside from these exhibitions, Manuel was focused on the life of a typical Mexican after the revolution. The revolution began as a form of protest from the middle class and lower class against the current dictator Porfirio Diaz in 1910. In his regime, political bosses called caciques controlled the elections and any type of political opposition. At this time, the most powerful families of Mexico monopolized the economy and the land around the country. The lower class were placed in a position where they had no land, no role in the economy, and no voice. During the Porfiriato, Mexico's natural resources, as well as people, were exploited by foreign investors. Labor was extremely cheap, almost free, thanks to the support of the dictator. The lower class was submitted to exploitation in plantations, mines, constructions, and many more. Everything started to change until 1924, when Plutarco Elias Calles was elected as a president. The revolution for many people was beneficial, but Bravo knew that there were still problems inside the society of the working class. The elite class had benefited with excellent education, free healthcare, land, and many more things after the revolution. However, the lower class seemed to be stuck in the same place. The workers had lost their political power and voice. This made the working class upset and disillusioned on the revolution, since they were the least benefited after all. They were promised a new kind of life, just like in the elite class, and now they were almost in the same place they started in. Bravo realized these problems and exposed them to the world. In his photograph, striking worker, assassinated, where a worker is lying down, covered with blood, shows that the new government that promised freedom and democracy was not open to criticism from the working class. Another impacting photograph of Bravo is the crouch ones, where he shows the reality of the working class, where they eat and their living conditions. 
The lower class lived in rural areas with deteriorated dirty homes made of adobe and ratty clothes. He even said once, my work is by order, not an explicit order, but implicit by the society in which I live. He always believed that involving death, either symbolically or physically, was not useless. Instead, it marked the social worry of the post-revolutionary era. Many people believed his recent involvement of symbols of death was caused by his experience during the revolution. John Mraz said, I would argue instead that the politics of Álvarez Bravo in his search of Mexico's essence could better be found in the ways he represents the daily life activities of humble people, rather than in overt social commentary. Bravo spent his entire life traveling the streets of Mexico, where he met many artists, international and national, along the way. One of them was André Breton, who called him one day to take a picture of whatever he wanted to be the cover of an international magazine. Bravo had a passion for nudes and exposing Mexican female beauty all natural. He included symbols like the mat the indigenous woman is laying in and representative plants which all symbolize Mexico. His passion for photographing nudes in another way was influenced by Picasso's cubism. The picture of Retrato del Eterno represents the daily form of women getting beautiful. A historian said, his experience of the Mexican people resulted him in such a natural degree that turning it into an aesthetic or a task, it would have seemed a fraud. Bravo always tried to add Mexican symbols to his images because that is what he found out along his experiences that was the identity of being a Mexican. We often can see the transformation and meaning behind many objects in his pictures. For example, the man represents a typical textile mat from Mexico, but because Mexicans are trying to be westernized, he used a plain mat and not a folkloric mat. As well as he uses a bonsai that represents the typical maguey plant. He also used it to create the essence of the mini Popocatepetl, one of the volcanoes that dominates the valley of Mexico. La poética de Manuel Bravo es muy particular, lleva una nostalgia a través de todas sus imágenes, habla de ausencia, habla de pérdida, habla de la belleza de la vida, de la apreciación de vida, de lo frágil de la, de la vida. Es una fotografía con valores bastante modernos en cuanto a la fotografía, en, en cuanto a su técnica, en cuanto a la connotación de las imágenes, ¿verdad? que esta específicamente habla de una ausencia de, de una mujer, eh, de, de un aspecto femenino, de la, del abandono, de la decadencia, de la, el abandonar esta vida. Bravo's photography is usually seen as poetry in real life because he has many symbols in his pictures, like death, Mexican culture, and others. He used techniques he learned by many people around the world. For example, his high angle and low angle, that were really typical of him, were influenced by Alexander Rodchenko from Russia, the close-ups from the American Edward Weston, the nudes by Picasso, and many more. Bravo would take pictures of Diego Rivera's murals, a Mexican muralist, also from the post-revolutionary era that portrayed Mexico. Manuel Álvarez Bravo impacted the Mexicans with his pictures. He gave voice and dignity to a class that was oppressed for many years before and after the revolution. He never intended to involve his pictures into politics, but they served as encouragement for the lower class to keep fighting for their voice and their rights. All of his images are the eternal definition of what is a Mexican. Manuel Álvarez Bravo dedicated his life to explore Mexico's streets and culture. In every journey, he encountered the loss of Mexican identity and lost cultures. He also encountered many artists around the world thanks to his exhibitions. Bravo exchanged the real Mexico to the world, as well as many techniques and relationships with other international and national artists. <laughs>